The GTX 480 was launched way back in 2010 with an official TDP of 250 watts. However, further testing revealed that the graphics cards at maximum load would use more than 300 watts of power. The GTX 480 was essentially the best of its class in terms of gaming performance for a single video card and was also one of the first to be developed with DirectX 11 support. This video will explain why the GTX 480 is still remembered as one of the most inefficient graphics cards that had quite a high price tag and was also able to be used as a portable cooking station thanks to its quote efficient cooling system. Removing the plastic shroud reveals one of the most basic cooling systems known to humanity, the blower style cooler. Mounted on a graphics card that was supposed to be the top of the line using more than 300 watts of power. This one is being composed out of three main components. A blower fan, a metal heatsink with four heat pipes mind you, and a metallic plate for passive cooling. But I'm going to show you in a second how inefficient this thing actually is. Starting with the heatsink, it has a total of five heat pipes, but we have no idea if these are made out of copper or aluminum. What we know for sure, because it was a massive selling point back in the day, is that the heat pipes make direct contact with the heat spreader of the GPU core. Nevertheless, a heatsink this size and format was never going to provide adequate cooling for such a beefy graphics cores. And as I'm going to show later in the video, the other components of the graphics cards are completely ignored. The cooling for the other components, such as the MOSFETs, capacitors, VRM, memory chips and chokes, is done by a single very thin metallic shroud attached to the PCB of the graphics cards. In addition, for such a basic passive cooling solution, this plate is attached to the card with no less than 13 screws. This is 9 screws more than it was necessary. Removing this plate reveals the rest of the PCB and the thermal pads placement. Please keep in mind that the thermal pads you see are not the original ones and the same is the case with the thermal compound applied on a heat spreader. Going back to the passive cooling of this VGA, the issue with using a metallic plate and thermal pad in such a video card is the amount of power being moved through the power delivery system. In my opinion, some metal surface and a thermal pad is insufficient for what this graphics card was capable of. But the biggest problem with the cooling of the GTX 480 was due to the heat spreader that covered the VGA core die. This is the same issue that CPUs have today, with the heat spreader making contact with the die through some thermal compound. This means that the heat transfer is not done efficiently and thus the graphics card has a higher temperature overall. In the end, the blower style cooling system was not enough for 300 watts of power in a period where quad SLI configurations were what RGB is now for trending. So you couldn't imagine four GTX 480s in an SLI configuration, all of them with underpowered cooling systems and all of them being close to each other. The design and the usage of these graphics cards is what caused massive failures for these models and now it is very hard to find a GTX 480 used in working conditions. Condition. Most of them are still working, but if put through a synthetic benchmark, will most likely develop artifacts thanks to years of usage with improper cooling and high temperatures. 